only three really bodies. But, <laughs> but because we're non-dimensional and non-local, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely non-local. We are definitely non-local. <laughs> so uh, you don't really have to be here physically to, to be here. Um, well, I'm glad everybody can tune in. Uh, tonight we're, we're going to start the first of our uh, 12, 13, maybe 400 lessons, I don't know, study on on creation and 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 you know the the old saying is you can spend 70 weeks in the first verse of genesis uh is is more than a true statement uh we're going to study torah for the sake of heaven and for the sake of torah and over the past few weeks we've been studying the primordial worlds and we decided that we would go back to the beginning which is really a, a, a statement that you cannot make because uh, where, do you, where do you begin something that has no beginning? Uh, especially if the end is rooted in the beginning, you're dealing with a circle. So what you have to do on a circle is you have to pick a point on some part of that circle and that's just where you start. And that's the secret to the Tzim Tzim. It, it's, it's a point in, in Hashem and God in the Ian Sof, it's a point that what is the center of something that has no center? Hmm. So, as in all as in all uh, Torah minds, you, you you have to always leave space for more space. So, um, I came across something here written by Bax that's that's very cool. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna start here, but this is really not the starting spot. If that makes sense. In dealing with the kings of Edom in chapter 36 of Genesis, we know that all this happens before Genesis chapter one, or does it? Because Genesis chapter one deals with Adam and Eve, and we know there's Adam called Moan. We know there's before that because the number six resonates in all of creation. The number six resonates in Akudim for six days, Nakudim for six days, Barudim for six days, on and on and on and on. So when, when they say in Genesis the six days of creation, it's absolutely correct. On which level? In which world? In which time? at which point. So, wrap our minds around that just for one second. And it happens to, and, and so, the, the this kings of Edom happened to fall in chapter 36 of Genesis, which is really before Genesis 1. And we, we've we learned that this is, this is a hidden thing, and that the, num the number 36 is the number that alludes to the hidden light of creation which shone for 36 hours in Genesis in Adam in the garden which came to emulate such darkness and chaos because its root itself was from the previous 36 shinings before that the previous 36 shinings before that and so on. Just like the holiday of Hanukkah, during which we light 36 candles. So we see that even the Hanukkah goes back to the Ian Sof and the original emanations of the light that is shown in Adam. The Leshem and the Golden of Vilna state that the tree of knowledge. And the Torah itself is in exile of, by the, of the conse consequently of the eating of the tree of knowledge. We understand this eating a tree of knowledge is a tree of Adam and Eve. But it goes far before that. And what we, what we will find is that that same fall that Adam and Eve did is just another iteration of the story that happened in the world prior to that, in the world prior to that, in the world prior to that, 
and on and on and on. So it's very it's very relevant that we sit down and study the prior worlds, and we will see that the Baal Shem Tov, and we will explain what a Baal Shem Tov is, that the Baal Shem Tov basically says that if, if you don't understand what you're teaching in Kabbalah, you cannot teach Kabbalah. So this is very important for me as well as for y'all. The Gra, the Gra states that the Torah has been given over to external forces and it is a great mystery and exceedingly concealed. Additionally, he says this passage, and he is afflicted because of our sins that's written in Isaiah, is referring to Moses. The intention is that due to the sin of May Marivah, this is the sin of the bitter waters, when Moses struck the rock instead of speaking to it, because he spoke to it the first time. It was decreed upon Moses that his holy teachings would be desecrated. A strange Agadah of the Oral Torah would clothe his teachings and conceal them for all mankind, which was given in a place of scoffers in each generation to belittle them. This is what Moses petitioned from Hashem not to conceal the secrets of the Torah in these forms, in the forms of metaphors and riddles and cloaks. But Hashem did not grant him this request. This is the matter of Moses' death and his burial outside the land of Israel because of what he did. It is in the future the secrets within them will be revealed and this new Torah that will be revealed in the future. We are outside the land of Israel as well at the present. And these, this Torah is in exile outside the land of Israel as well in the present. I think as Noahides, if we look at this in a very uh, righteous Gentile mind frame, that it is us that can pick up these sparks of holiness that are concealed outside of the land of Israel and bring them back to the end. So uh, this obviously was a predetermined plan and it had been that way since the beginning. So it is to our benefit that boy, that we have the Torah now in our hands. And it is more to our benefit that the rabbis that know how to uncloak and break out these hidden uh, messages of Moses are teaching them to us. So we're very fortunate in that. Okay, what we're going to do today is we are going to start briefly. I'm going to read from an essay um, of Bart, Rabbi Bart Sadok, Ariel Bart Sadok. I'd like to make sure we give him credit for this. It is recorded in the Sefer of the Baal Shem Tov that Rabbi Israel ben Eleazar, the famed Baal Shem Tov, once admonished a man for teaching Kabbalah in public. Surprised, the man responded that Rabbi Israel taught Kabbalah in public as well. Then why shouldn't he? The Baal Shem Tov responded and said that when he teaches Kabbalah, he makes sure that his students understand that all the lessons of the supernal worlds also apply to this world and to the inner world of man itself. So this is, this, is a, this is a very key statement of the Baal Shem Tov. If you're, if you're learning it, if you're learning uh, the deep teachings of the Torah, you, you have to understand how they apply to, to, to today, to you. Because if you, it's, it's, it's grievous 
to think that it does not apply to you. The, the other fellow, however, was teaching Kabbalah, <coughs> Kabbalah as it is written in the books. By doing so, the Baal Shem Tov told him that he was committing grievous error trying to understand the metaphysical worlds with a physical mind, and this is an impossible task. The inevitable consequences of such an act that are that the Kabbalah is misunderstood and it is misused. Such awesome power is misdirected could unleash devastating results. So, when we study this, it's very important that we wrap our minds around it and, and get a grasp on it and, and really, really dig into it and learn it and figure it out so that it doesn't have devastating results on us, on, on our physicality, on our mind, so that we can fix our world. But obviously, we have to fix ourselves in this process. In order to receive the full, the best benefit of the study of Kabbalah, you have to understand it thoroughly. In order to do this, you must penetrate the whole metaphor. Like this weekend, we, we used the tennis ball. It, 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 it's a metaphor, but you have to look past the tennis ball, in other words. Tennis ball is just to bring you to a place. Yeah, the, the tennis ball is just to bring you to a spot to where you can say, okay, here's a representation that has nothing to do with it, yet has everything to do with it. Um, the seekers of the Torah have been concealed and, and encoded in a fashion that can be deciphered properly through Kabbalah and unleash the power of the human mind this is the same power that created the universe. And such power can only be entrusted to those who are appropriately moral of spiritual character and can be entrusted not to abuse this information. What, what we're about to learn is very powerful information. Although we're not going to get into a lot of the formulas, uh, I have discussed with Rabbi Back some of the formulas of prayer. There are some very specific gates that can be opened, some things and things that can be done that only these gentlemen know. Um, everything is a formula. Two plus two is four, even for us. The problem. Uh, this is this is going to be more than. Than, than mystics and it's going to be more than philosophy it can transform your life it can change your consciousness and expand what was previously an invisible world to you this this is the realm of speaking with angels Moses did it Abraham did it Jacob did it Joseph did it how were they doing it what were they doing? They were Torah masters. Not only that, they had to be Kabbalistic masters or Baal Shem Tos. And that is the place where hopefully we may or may not can get to, but this is the only path to that. The problem long associated with this study is the inability to establish and understanding the depths of Torah. <coughs> now was it the, uh, uh, that was the Gahan that uh, said that you, you can't uh, understand the... You can't understand the, the Peshat without the Sub. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we're the, the the rabbis that are the from this information is going to come from is the Leshem and the Rizal, some of the, the greatest Kabbalistic minds of, of all time, uh, writing some of the greatest Kabbalistic literature. We're going to start out with the Ian Sof, the infinite of preexistence. This is the beginning of beginnings. Unlike the Kabbalistic authors before him, Rabbi Chaim Vital, who was 
a student of the Arizals. Traditionally begins his work with the review of what's called the Seder Hahish Tashalut, which is the order of spiritual creation. So what we're what we're embarking on now is going to be the order of spiritual creation. And it is mind blowing. The first this marks the first time the order of creation is is in a present or system systematic form from its beginnings. Unlike other Kabbalists before him who were completely silent on this matter, Rabbi Haim expounds ever so slightly on that which, exi which existed before creation. Rabbi Haim explains in numerous places that prior to all creation, all that existed was or pashu, O H R or light, mm -hmm. pashu, which sounds a lot like the pashat level. And this is where the term comes. Pashut, Pashat. You see the double entendre there of where you have two different two words that basically means the same thing. So the Pashat is the simple meaning. This is the simple light. A simple, undifferentiated light. This was the light of the Creator. It, it equally filled all places. There was no place that it was not. There was nothing else. There was no thing. There was nothing, just the light. There was no up, no down, no right, no left. There was no beginning and there was no end. Everything was the simple or pashu. Rabbi Haim calls this light, the light, the end sof, the infinite or without end. It is, it is the essential state in which God exists outside all that He has emanated. Now that statement right there, we have to we have to look at that statement just a little bit. God exists outside that He had emanated. How could something exist outside of God to begin with? If He emanated it, He's in it. <laughs> he's around it. He can't. He so how can God emanate something outside of Himself and not be in it? Well, He had to. He had to make the place. He had to make that place where you can emanate from, from outside of him. Yeah, and and to be honest with you guys, uh, this is this is the secret of free will. Mm -hmm. It's the secret of free will. Um, Rabbi Haim declares that this outside of existence light of Ian Sof is far too sublime to be subject, subject to human consideration. Therefore, he seals up this matter and forbids anyone to attempting any philosophical or intellectual investigations. Yet, that's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> because anytime they say that, they're, they're concealing the information. Yet, as he progresses to discuss the reason for creation, he reveals significant importance and in information about the insof which we are going into. In the opening lecture of the or Zarot Chaim, the rabbi states that here a desire arose within the insof, within the light, at its very center point. Just just like just like when a thought arises in your mind. Where does it really come from? Well, we have to give it a place. We have to give it a center point. It has to come from somewhere. <clears throat> Something that has no center, how can we call it as a center? This is where we have to take our thinking. This is the secret of Rabbi Akiva and the Ten Martyrs. We're going to see that Rabbi Akiva and the Ten Martyrs is the original desire to create the universe. The ten original spherotic structures. And it's it's a very it's a very deep lesson, but this is something that Moses was dealing with himself. Uh, Rab, uh, Rabbi Akiva was uh, teaching Moses when he was on Mount Sinai. Yet 
Rabbi Akiva was born 2,000 years later. So, uh, some very interesting things going on there. And um, this desire arose at the center point of the infinite, and a formless or pursuit of the Ian Sof. The Ian Sof was to be called by his names. So we have this thought, this original desire to create creation. And the Ian Sof's desire was to be called by his names. So to be called by his names, he had to create something to call him his names. Now, up on the board, which you guys can't see, but I will go over it. He wanted, first he had to, to uh, make his qualities. These are what we call the Midot. Remember the Midot? These are his six qualities. These are mercy, empathy. These are uh, Hesed, Guvarot, Teferit, Netzach, Ho, Yeso. Mm -hmm. Lloyd Burgess? Yeah. Um, Chad's on the other line there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, any, so anyway... The uh, these qualities, the midot, there's six of them. Mm -hmm. So since we have six, six is the vav. Mm -hmm. Six is the spine, and six is the staff of Moses. This is the six midot, the middle of the sporadic structure that we've already gone over. Okay. It's called the Midot. These are the these are the these are the six lower spherot without Mahut. Okay? Now, the Ron Hawk says, if you just say that God created the universe to bestow his goodness, you're I don't want to say an idiot, but you're just you're on level one. And if you just say he created it to give his names, well, that's just that's just another. Chad's. All right, Chad, we're back. <clears throat> that's just another level. The Ram Hall says there's three reasons. He wanted to be able to judge and test. The second reason, he wanted to reveal his attributes. The third reason, 